Yale Brothers, episode 21. Happy New Year, everybody. This is Chris. I'm Roger. And we're the Yale Brothers, and welcome, yeah, welcome to episode 21 to ring in the new year for us. That was uh, Technicolor Town, one of the recordings I did, we did with that song. That was in the early 2000s here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, you recorded that when I missed you because I wasn't here. Yeah, Roger wasn't on it. I played guitar, rhythm guitar on that, and drums. Whoa. Um... Yeah. You're so, pretty good, man. Yeah, Rex Polk on bass, Chris Gladden on lead. Wow. And I think that was it on that one. I used to like playing that song. Yeah, it's a fun song to play. We played it in our, our band Rogue Alley in, yeah, oh in Hollywood. God. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Played it at Camp Pendleton, I remember. Oh, yeah, I think we did, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I think we started the set with that, yeah. When Polly Shore was dissing us. Yeah, the victory, the quote, I'm doing air quotes, the victory celebration for Desert Storm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here we are, man. It's a yes. new year. It's a new year. We made it. Well, those of us that did make it, unfortunately, my father-in-law died last week. God. Yeah. And we'll God bless you, Yeah, Jim. we're we're all heartbroken about that, man. And God bless my mother-in-law and Betsy and Craig family. Yes. Yep. Anyway, so we all made it. We the rest of us that are listening to this have made it. The ones that are talking have made it, uh, it up to the point that we're actually talking. By yeah. the time you hear it, by the grace of God, we'll still be here. I guess I might as well talk. You, know, you don't have to. There's really not much for you to say. I could say. <laughs> what do you want to talk about, man? Quite- this is uh this is a later gig. We're doing. Uh, we're recording this uh, on the third. Yeah. Rod just worked a full shift and, and came in. Well, don't people say Happy New Year like for the first two weeks of the new year or something? Well, I, get, I don't know what the uh, protocol I've, is. I've been saying Happy New Year to everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, of course you can say that. Quite for no reason, I'm here for the season and high as a kite. 
Are you? Living in Edda with Maud at Cap Fedda, which couldn't be right. Did you say everyone's here, frightfully gay, nobody cares what people say. And though the Riviera is really much queerer than Rome at its height, on Wednesday night I went to a marvellous party. What a frightfully, wait a minute, queer? Frightfully queer? No, is that Noel Coward? Did I say I said frightfully gay? Didn't I? Oh yeah, frightfully gay. Does that mean it could mean anything from Noel Coward? Uh, it's a song. Like very called, in good spirits. Or? I went to a marvelous party. Yeah, I've been to a marvelous. So he's party. he's lit up. He's lit up, and, and you know, yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, I went through this heavy duty Noel Coward phase when I was younger. Oh yeah. I mean, I'd say starting at about nineteen, something like that. Yeah, I remember all that. With the, with the long uh, cigarette holders and all that. Very camp era. I loved you. it. I loved everything about it. That man was uh, kind of a, like a... If you saw pictures of him when you were younger or whatever, we and didn't really know what he was up to. He was kind of odd-looking guy, right? Yeah, but kind of weird-looking guy. That cat. guy was the on top of the world and on Broadway and in London. Yeah. And with hit songs, hit smash plays... Uh, yeah, he was the man, books. dude. Yeah, uh, they called him the master. It yeah, like books, plays, records. Um, I think he called himself the master. I think he, that probably started. And I think he was a complete diva, probably. No doubt about it, man. But he was usually successful at starting at like at tw- he was twenty four when his fr- first play really took off. It was called the Vortex. That just I don't know. I just got got enamored of him a- after I saw a uh, morally safer segment on 60 minutes oh yeah it was just kind of fascinating to me. another odd looking cat oh man yeah <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. loved him though yeah me too yeah. oh man i miss all those old 60 minutes so things. what about uh so what noel coward was a big influence on you oh well, i don't know man i mean after i saw that i found one of dad's old books called the privilege of his company by a guy named william marchant it was kind of a his i guess a memoir of knowing noel coward is it <laughs> yeah and then I just Rot. and down the rabbit hole I went. Man, yeah, I don't think you came up for a while, dude. No, man. I mean, you know, you remember like big songs like "I'll See You Again," plays like "Private Lives" and "Blythe Spirit." Oh yeah, um, big time, big, big time, time, man. I wore out a record called Noel, "Noel Coward" at Las Vegas. I remember you playing that incessantly. That was very, very cool. Oh, I liked it. Uh, and I think the musical director was a young Peter Matz. I don't know who that is, but... A, he, I, I think he ended up... He worked with all kinds of people. He was very young then. Yeah. Maybe Streisand, stuff like that. What was he? Huh? What was he? Like a music musical director. Oh, okay, okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. But, I mean, then Noel Coward influenced everything about me back then. Yeah, are you on your mic, dude? You're Am a, I? You're above your mic. I no. see you're... you're you're not in the middle of your mic. No, okay. Am I now? No, you're not. You had to move it up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But uh, the, still kind of above it, but that's okay. I uh, I sold yeah, all my better. Noel Coward shit for really cheap. I'm sure you got. I'm sure you sold it really cheap. You know why? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Ain't nobody buying. Oh my no. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody buying what Noel was selling right that's now. That's not it. I just needed money fast. Ah, I see. Well, I sold a lot of albums like that, oh, too. Oh, that's but, ridiculous. So didn't you write a, a one-act play called The Coward and Me or something? Did it you was work on to, it? Yeah, uh, it was supposed to be like a like a cabaret with thing. With you and a piano player? Yes. My friend Mark came down to something with me called... Mark Mulkeen, who's been on the show. Yes. And helped me out one night uh, at a place called the Alicat Bistro. And I stood up and sang Noel Coward songs. Where was that? Oh my God! Century City, somewhere down down that way. Oh, or toward the airport, somewhere. What is an open mic? Yeah, exactly. Oh, but uh, <laughs> well. And then he inspired me to smoke more than I smoked before. Tobacco? Yeah. Oh, the the he always had a cigarette in his hand. It was all sophisticated. Yeah that that was the whole allure of it all. You know the old movies and yes. Oh, unfortunately, what a bad rabbit hole that oh yeah that and, you know having having bars in the office or in a me- meeting in the middle of the day cigarettes yeah, yeah martinis you got people hanging around smoking pipes in the old black and white movies yeah yeah of course yeah. i understand he didn't really get that hammered i mean every night apparently our friend roy mosley told us and it's in it's documented other places that he'd have like one scotch before he went on 
something. Oh, that's like that. nothing, man. Scotch and I forgot, but Dewars and soda probably. Yeah, well, how about like uh, like uh, Dean Martin didn't really. It was a big prop. Yes. Like can't say the same for Jackie Gleason. Oh no, I bet not. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway. So. Yeah. So kind of like uh, the rock guys trying to be all macho with the. I'm sure most of them were drinking, but I mean a lot of. <laughs> there are a few of them were just had those bottles of Jack Daniels. I don't think there was anything going on poser no probably not poser no <laughs> poser <laughs> yeah if you're gonna bring a bottle of jack out you damn well better be sipping on it man uh, better be real oh god if not well, i mean don't do it don't act like you're something you're not yeah i don't know what that yeah. was all about bro uh braggadocio <laughs> rock and roll <laughs> you know but who knows man anyway man that that was a fun time Oh yeah, a fun time. Uh, you, you on the other hand were Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I started smoking a pipe when I was about uh, eleven or twelve. <laughs> Tobacco pipe. Yes. Okay. I I, I start, started reading the uh, adventures and the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. I had a two volume set, and I just fell in love with. I just wanted to be in Victorian London. Was Sherlock Holmes a good writer? <laughs> <laughs> no, Watson was. <laughs> oh, a, oh my so, gosh! Sorry, Conan Doyle. Now that was the real master, Sir Arthur Conan no, Doyle. Don't do the, don't do the uh, Alan Sherman. Yeah, stick. yeah. <laughs> see, see how how it goes into uh, stream of consciousness. My son, the folk singer. Yeah, Alan that was Sherman. a live kind of a collection of live stuff by oh Alan Sherman. Gosh. That's awesome. Um, but you actually, why did he say bullcrit to that? Because I don't, he just because said of it. spiritism and all that stuff. I, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, who knows, maybe, man. maybe he thought he was a hack or something. Who knows? How could Conan Doyle be I, a hack? I don't know, but maybe he just said it to make people laugh. It wasn't funny, but oh god! Now we're talking about Alan Sherman. No, you're talking about Edna St. Vincent Millay and the whole UJA. If things aren't going so nice, <laughs> yeah. oh boy, yeah, yeah, there is See? some lovely advice. Oh boy. See where we're going? Things will be gay and carefree. Oh boy. If you'll just listen to me. Oh my goodness. Oh man. When's the last time you heard that? 45 years ago? Probably about the same time I was listening to Vaughn Meter. Oh, the first family record. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of cool. It, unfortunately, when Kennedy got assassinated, it, obviously there was nowhere. For that was his the end of his career. Go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd yeah like it to got say shot to hell. Ooh. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, oh boy. boy! Oh boy! Yeah, you know we tried to record a, 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 a initial uh, session, this, uh, not a session, a yeah. take of this podcast a second ago, but I ran out of my, space. My brother messed up. <laughs> I'm using this little Zoom Live Track L8 instead of going directly to uh, my computer. So I'm, I'm no, like, but I have a small. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a small, here, you're my twin be careful uh, i have a small uh 64 data yeah it's data card in here whatever they call it xd or whatever so i ran out of space i should have known to clear it before Raj got here fortunately he didn't give me too bad of a hard time no i don't how, all he had to do is stroll in here i had everything set I'm up like, chris I've, you're at your beautiful home studio here comes one of the doggies oh hi everybody's okay. home so if you're gonna you're gonna be might hear some noise hi boys Hi, boys. So anyway, here we are, my beautiful home studio. Yeah. Yes. So thanks for having it all set up and stuff like that. That's awesome. Hey, no problem, man. You can tear it down and 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 do all this stuff for me. Now I you believe. were you had like you were buying tobacco very young. Yeah, that's when you could do mail orders or just walk into a tobacco yeah. store. To, just send to, a COD. I mean, send to, send a money order somewhere, and you'll get no one carded. No, no. Go anything. up to a uh, into a tobacco shop. I mean, some old dudes hanging around leaning smoking pipes and say hey my grandfather needs a you know, yeah hey my my grandfather needs a, a you want to get a present for a him. quart of booze and some pipe tobacco yeah. here here's a little note he wrote yeah and now as a tobacconist yeah over the years i've had to shoot kids down all the time with yeah kid how about how yeah. about you made a bunch of friends when it turned 18 when the smoking age was 18 all of a sudden it went to 21 and they're oh like, womp, womp, no womp. no I've, i felt sorry for 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 kids on the cusp turning 18 womp, at that time womp. you can get your own you know they fell in love with the culture of cigars yeah you sure know, educated customers certainly buying t beautiful stuff great premium cigars and you know being outfitted with humidors and accessories Ooh, next thing you know 
the the, uh, the legal age went to t- to twenty one across the board in uh, in a federal deal. Ooh, and also, but it's the same kind of flashback to when we were growing up. The poor kids drinking age was twenty one. Then it went down to eighteen, and just before we turned eighteen, it went up to twenty one. Yeah, but again. somehow that never really stopped us. It doesn't, does it really ever stop anyone from doing any no, of this? No, no. Hey, kids, I only have one suggestion for you. What's that? It's two words. And a lot of you don't understand how this works, but take it from me, your old pal, Chris. (laughs) Be cool. Oh, be cool. That's all you have to do, man, is just be cool. Yeah. And things, you know, good things happen. Just be cool, man. You're not cool. What about being... No, no, cool is a different kind of cool. Like, be cool, don't go, don't, don't, yeah. I'm not going to teach you how to... I probably think that's uncool. Be cool... You're going to explain. I'm not going to explain. You know, I don't, if, cool. if I have to explain to you what be cool means, you ain't cool. You ain't ever going to be cool. Oh. Dig? <laughs> I you see. Know. Hey, kid, I see you got a lot of book smarts, but you're stupid on the street. I suggest you immerse yourself. In what? In the well-rounded uh, classic reading education. Oh. And also. That's going to help you to be cool? Actually, street, no, nothing, none, none whatsoever. What not, about not just, even Kerouac can save you on that, but you got to oh, get, get get on the street, man. That isn't writing; that's typing. Yeah, sure. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, Noel Coward. I maybe it was a little detour in my life, but I mean, I was still trying to play music with you guys. You guys didn't. Who's really, you guys? Er, all our friends back in the day. What does that mean? Yeah. Play music with you guys? I, don't I thought know. we were the Yale brothers we, back then. We are, but you guys didn't make fun of me. Why would we, man? I don't We're, know because I don't know how it is. How? Why would you? We, anyone make fun of you for doing your own thing? That's <laughs> you're telling following it, a bunch of young men not to make fun of other young men. Young men, young, young man, young man. We didn't give you any grief, man. Not really. Why would we, man? That's the master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh my god! Seriously, what other kind of weird influences did you have? Bob Dylan. Is that a weird influence? Every bit as weird as Noel Coward. I never suggested Noel Coward was weird. Okay. Weird influences. Uh, I mean. I don't mean no. weird, but like what, what? some of your influences. Let's have some. Burroughs. Who? Burroughs, Allen Ginsberg. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I no. see. Oh, I see. I, see, I just, see, now he's that's uh, okay. condescending. I, just, I finally got, got around to reading. Uh, the Bible. Is that weird? No. Yeah. But uh, I just finished reading uh, Burroughs' Junkie. Oh, that book is tired. His first thing, it was junk. and Actually, junkie. Burroughs wasn't really an influence. No, I'm thinking, whoa. No, no, not at all, man. Oh, God. Uh, Funny, I have you a mean, Ted Morgan uh, biography. Gene Krupa. Of Burroughs. Yeah. Which is the same guy who wrote the biography of Somerset Mom that I read. Well, that's probably all right. 30 years, 35 years ago. That's interesting. Uh, I have a ridiculous book I got as a remnant. Really? Called The Priest, they called him. It was about Burroughs. Oh. Written by some English dude, and it was just crap. Was it like a big fanboy thing? Lots of pictures and just stupidly written. Yeah, but thank God God he wrote Tarzan. Very funny. (laughs) Very funny, man. People are probably confused listening to this. Naked Lunch. Oh, that's a... Oh, man, that, oh, that cut and that paste stuff? bullshit, in my opinion. Ramball, you read. Oh, yeah, of that's course. A, that's kind of a through line, a bunch of stuff there. That's all Jim Morrison's yeah, fault. Yeah, and then you like Allen Ginsberg and Kerouac and all that. I like a lot of things, man. Yes. <laughs> Was there... Inf- um, don't, 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 don't put me into a box of, 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 of beat, was a that beat all, box. <laughs> is there, was there, was there a lot of uh, speed going on in that generation? I think so, yeah. But there was like, uh, uh, but somehow like the inhalers, yeah, the benzedrine, benzedrine, benzedrine inhalers. inhalers. But wait a minute, Kerouac didn't like any of that. He liked drinking, yeah, and he got mad at other people for talking and doing. Yeah, drugs. but then he did the uh, did all that speed and sat there typing and writing for days. On that, that was the thing that Capote said. This is on the road. Yeah. Yeah, Supposed, supposedly on supposedly. a roll of paper. Where would you get a roll of paper? I don't know. Allen Ginsberg was instrumental in getting him published. Kerouac? He hustled for him, man. He he, he hustled really for did. Burroughs. 
Well, yeah, he did. I mean, that's how he was. He, he, if he loved you, man, and he, he had faith in your abilities, yeah, you were his friend. There was nothing you wouldn't do to try to get you published. That's really cool. So what I was now doing... Ginsburg was something else, man. I bet. Tell amazing. us about him. I don't. I mean, just <laughs> his, his loyalty and you know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That you. Were, I don't understand why I didn't get into poetry like you. You did. I'm, maybe I'm not. Uh, I deficit. didn't really get into poetry, man. Edna St. Vincent Millay. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, yeah. boy. No, I wasn't into... Yeah. No, that's... I, I mean, wrote a lot of poetry. You had, you had a different kind. You were more of like a brooding... Brooding. Uh, angry young man. Whatever, man. Not really. Not really. I just kind of kept to myself, and uh, I must have... It must be something to do with my face. Surly. Surly bitch face. No, you weren't. Were you stoned a lot back then, too? Not that much, man. No enough no i mean what do you think i walked around stoned all the time <laughs> i don't know what's the matter with your know. eyes boys my dad what's the matter with your eyes boys go get some exercise you need to go out and get some fresh air and i did ex- i mean exercise. i did exercise yeah so my dad did catch us smoking once look at your eyes boy shame and he boys. was disgusted with us. He, he, it wasn't he's... just us he gave the lecture to it was our friends too no we were listening to a playback of something we just mixed down <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think Dad would be back for a while. We we're in the living room jamming it out, at front, you know, hooked up up the Porta Studio to the to the uh, system in the nice, good system in the in the living room. Yeah, and in comes Dad, and I guess pot was smoke was wafting. Oh boy! And so he got mad. He said, "Disgusting." Oh, that was another time. And I think well, he. he well, cur- then, but then he came up. Well, no, hold on. Okay. Then he goes, "Boys." Creativity starts with a clear mind, not a fuzzy one. And he stormed off into his room and slammed the door. That's the same kind of thing he did when he saw I got an earring. Oh, yeah. Because but he, no, no. Yeah. God bless you, Raj. The funny thing is, Raj did all that stuff first. So by the time I did it, I didn't get a second thought or second comment about it. No. What do you mean? Like when you got an earring? Yeah, he didn't care. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Hey, I didn't judge Dad for anything he did, man. But, oh, he's a suit and tie kind of guy. Dad didn't do anything. No. Uh, So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Oh, by the way, what was up with that rat tail you had? It was. I knew you were going to bring that stupid thing up. You you had some curious choices. I'm just wondering what that was. I just wanted to grow it. I didn't, I don't know. Rat tail. That was a time of my dangling Mickey Mouse earring. I remember that thing. I like that thing. Like, can I see enamel? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of yeah, that was kind of nice. Oh, what a, what a mistake! <laughs> With the banana painters pants, the banana color painters pants, yes, and, and the red ones. And didn't the you pixie have like a boots. velour kind of red? Sure. Yeah. Little V neck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. That was yeah, that was an interesting look. With little pixie boots, with one color belt, pants, shoes, shirt. Very colorful. Yes. So it, I dare say flamboyant. Yes, and add a little eyeliner sometimes. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. We, did, we didn't go through that phase that much. We? I mean, even in bands. We? You had eyeliner at one no, time. No, I did not. Did we not have a photo shoot with eyeliner on or no? I don't remember someone putting eyeliner on me. <laughs> did you ever put eyeliner on? No. Did any other rock bands put eyeliner on? Shoot. Oh my God! You, Eyeliner, twisting my words around. You were like a new romantic kind of. Yeah, person. I know. I got a perm. I got a little perm. Kept my hair in a pompadour, Listen, man, I, like the rest of the Romeos wore a permanent wave. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was all about skinny black jeans. Yeah, Beetle boots, Rambo, and Allen Ginsberg. motorcycle jacket. Yeah, um, surly. Not no really. motorcycle. I'm a Springsteen fan, no motorcycle, dude. mind you. No motorcycle, mind you, yet. That came later. But yeah. no, I'm a spring, I was a Springsteen all the way, man. Oh, yeah. I know. You've said you got you went to yourself by yourself to see Springsteen. Oh, several times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have a girlfriend at the time, and I didn't want to Aww. waste money asking some girl to go with me. You didn't, I didn't know. You didn't need a girlfriend if you didn't have one at the time. Well, sometimes I kind of needed a girlfriend, but, you know. Yes, but <laughs> then you... Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Guess, I guess so. Needed, need. It's not a question of need, is it? No, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. This is making me really nervous right why? now. Why? I don't know what you're talking about. Dude. No, I, you were asking me about Springsteen. Yeah, yeah. I, I so you, soul, I, yeah. didn't you meet a girl at the Springsteen concert? You said she was really nice to you. She sat next. Oh, to I you. sat next to a couple girls. They were awesome, man. Hey, could they you, invited me into their little 
you know click they're oh. click they're, they're, they they made me part of the, the fan you know springsteen fans are cool like they, that they, they felt sorry for you you were by yourself that's man. okay i used to go to diners by myself and oh, i liked you? it yeah that that makes sense like those kind of dressed in black jeans and a jacket read, reading <laughs> and the a books, reality re- sandwich reading, book reading the books yeah. you read but i used to love to go up to did, waddle's did park. you have a beret give me a break i, I had one do you remember waddle's park I, I do remember Waddles Park for some reason. I don't remember. Was where. it of Curson? Oh, Somewhere shit. up there? Uh, yeah. uh, Hollywood Peeps. If you, That place was my little sanctuary, man. Oh. Oh, man. It was. Uh, Didn't they have a. Gar- it was adjacent like, to, to uh, like Runyon Canyon, but it was further further west yeah, but didn't they have a uh, community garden there yeah they sure did there was oh, like yeah, the, little the, plots there was a like semi there was a large mansion type house in the front that, that that became the caretaker's place oh my god but i used to bicycle up there up that little hill they had gardens they had you know yeah were and there, then were up there further walls, were there walls on the other side like they like graduated like stairs i think so yeah i think so too. but i used to go up there and write poetry and hang out like oh, uh, far above all that stuff just by myself i loved it it was incredible it's a place is it cool places just to go, man. The, the crest of the hills is just they're just magical to me oh man the hollywood hills but anyway that would that was a cool place ironically I got in a in a fender bender with at Ralph's Rock and Roll Ralph's with my van. Oh no! Was, and, and the people that the lady that I accidentally bumped into, she was the caretaker of that. So she lived in that big house. There she was nice. I mean, I only just scraped her car, but oh my god! Yeah, were you hurt? Hurt man, turning right. She was turning in on Fuller. I was turning right, going up Fuller, and I misjudged it, and I just got too. Oh man, you got a fender bender, but not a Gibson b- bender. A B bender. Oh, have you been on a bender? I don't really know what a bender is. I'm so glad I don't drink it or smoke or do anything anymore. <laughs> you're a little bit easier to be around. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Here comes the self righteous uh, rant now. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's fun being sober now for me. Well, I haven't really had it. Really, I haven't had a drink in months, man. Well, that's I, awesome. Congratulations! I, that, Why are you glad. congratulating me? I don't know. <laughs> so, it's it's it's. <laughs> oh my god! You know, I'm just my blood pressure's better off for it. And some people say, "Hey, man, if you don't drink, when you wake up in the morning, that's as good as you're going to feel all day." Know, that was that's so stupid. Well, man. wait a minute. What if you feel good when you wake up? Why would you want to not feel good later? I so, mean, what if you feel is that being good drunk old feeling bit better, or being high feeling better than you did when you woke up? No, but being hungover is bad. Oh, it's all shit. No, if you apparently so, yeah. If you feel hungover, you can get better by you know, as the day progresses. Oh, I see. So that's if you wake up like that is as good as you feel all day. But you have to be hungover to appreciate it. Who knows, man? Uh, it's okay. It's I don't play that little game. Me either. Just living, loving, and giving. Oh boy. Oh boy. So what's up this year? I hope everybody's having a three days in. Any different? <laughs> yeah. Any different? Don't join a gym. You'll only quit. No, no. That's that. That's a bad idea. Don't, so who wants to join a gym right now? Don't join a gym. You'll only quit. I need a cleanse. You do. I need a a good cleansing fast. And I, I man, you, I've been eating too much sugar. Well, get yourself one of those fleet enemas. The high colonic. Oh, oh yeah. People used to. That was a thing. People used to go. Oh, I'm going to go get a colonic. Yeah, it's probably good for you, man. All I'm, that. I'm sure it flush is. Flush yourself out for like like remnants of stuff all, in there. For all that you. fecal matter from uh, 1979 that you couldn't was it still lodged up in your. Lo- <laughs> I guarantee you, you, you you'll float somewhere. out of the place, man. Just skipping. Oh my goodness! Whistling gracious. a happy tune. Hey, I'm not wanting a cigarette. That. Probably. I'm sure, that's really cool. You want a cigarette after that? I don't. know. <laughs> I don't smoke cigarettes anymore either. Hey, when are you going to go do your uh, colonoscopy, man? Oh, boy. We're going to go there this year. <laughs> you okay. okay. I'm not really big on going into doctor's offices right now just for routine True. shit. Men, men of a certain age, you got to get that uh, stuff wanna, checked I'm out. I'm going to get my like physical and all that, but do you really want to go into a doctor's office now and do that? I don't. No, I don't like to go in and do that anytime. I mean, you know. I only had one, man. You don't really remember it. No, but I, I'm just talking about with COVID and all. I know that. that I know that's like uh, the same. Come on re- into the office. The for same some re- routine thing. The same reason you don't want to go to the gym right now. No, no, no. I go to I go to the gym. 
Raj goes to work out at his son's garage. Yes, I do. That's nice. I mean, are you being religiously uh, diligent about it? Well, it's... Pushing through the, the barriers? We were going for three times a week, but now we've been doing two times a week one is core and legs and one is upper body and then the the opposite days like the three days i run slash walk a little bit whoa but he takes he takes good care of me and he sets up the program sometimes his sleep schedule i'd rather him sleep because he works third shift oh yeah uh, so he has like pre-prescribed things for me to do but i saw him him what day is it today Man, you could just say you did it. I saw him. Pro- yeah, <laughs> I know. Man, make, move some shit around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, and like I'm supposed to put the shit put away. Put a sweaty towel down somewhere. Yeah, going, like, but, but I, I can't. Oh, rough, he's man. already disciplined. Like you got to put away the dumbbells and all that. You know what I mean? Oh, but if just, it was my gym, I'd want everything just so. But just for fun, just leave it there. Yeah, and you're saying just pretend you worked out. Yeah, yeah. Or you mean Bob Harper doesn't meet you over there? Who's that? The guy from The Biggest Loser? Oh, I don't know. What I, about he, the chick? I don't know any. I haven't seen that show in years. Yeah, she's now. badass. Oh. <laughs> man, you, I forgot her name, but oh, Wesley's pretty Wesley's badass too and he's, he takes buff, good care man. of me, man. Um yeah, Wes would be a good coach. He is a coach and he's he's my coach now, which is very very um I love it. Man, he would be a good bodyguard. He would, would he? but I mean he's also good like helping me get get my finally get a little bit toned up in my in my age. Good. You're looking like you're getting a you're sitting up properly today. Oh, thank you. Like maybe your core is stronger. <laughs> I'm thank, slouching. Wes, if you hear this, thank you very much. Uh I'll show them. You're slouching in uh, the two 2021 i'm slouching toward gomorrah slouching toward bethlehem i am i'll be in adonis i'll show them oh, this. <laughs> i i really hope this year is going to be good for everyone I, for some reason i don't put it in years it's no i put it that, it's weird that we put it oh this year will be better than that year on a calendar it's what a are you counting odd. crows this, year, this was, year will be better than the last no i can't do that anymore i have to go every day where to the gym every, no every day's an adventure man oh and, yeah and, and hoping for a certain outcome is kind of a recipe for disaster and it, it, letting things be somehow and yeah. just uh taking a deep breath i'm learning things like that wow if things don't work out my way i still get upset but sure you know what i mean it's trying uh, it's not really about us it's just trying to be in the moment man i know it sounds cliche you do those tantric stomach exercises that sting used to show off <laughs> uh no and i've never seen any of those oh Wait, you, my god he was he, on some show and they took like he was like rolling his oh no oh, mr god, mr so mr tantric sex boy unbelievable dude. i don't want to know sting man he's so full uh, of himself i know dude. he is oh he, oh a genius I, I loved him in the police genius fine great music he's a genius good man. for him yeah and he knows it yeah who's more cocky what? sting or noel coward or gene simmons gene simmons i don't really consider him a genius gene yes <laughs> i mean good businessman oh yeah he's good like that serviceable bass player would you say he's cocky hell yes sting is a different kind of kind of self-important speaking of bass players oh I bet I bet Sting's a better bass player than Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons, I mean, obviously we all we all we liked Kiss. That was our. I love Kiss. Yeah, me too. Are you kidding me? And a great for for what they did, they were the best. Yeah, yeah, the hottest band in the land. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you're sure. talking about Sting, you're talking about another level of musicianship, man. How about that tight trio, man? The Police, damn, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. The drumming. Oh yeah. Oh, Beautiful man, Stuart Copeland. Some you know when the when when the when the chemistry is there the chemistry is there. That's how I feel whenever. Even I go though they out. wanted to kill each other. Sure, that's me and you. Want to kill each other? Nah, no. not really. No, we don't. When the chemistry's there, it's there. Yeah, like Led Zeppelin when they first did their thing in a rehearsal, they yeah. knew it doesn't take long to know, man. No. Yep. Oh man. Well, I have to say it's been a pleasure sitting here. Has with it? You. Yes. Well, thanks for coming we, here we really are, late how, on Sunday how, night. How far apart are we? We're two minutes apart. I think it's like six feet apart. Oh, I thought you meant two minutes. 
No, yeah, we are two minutes apart. I know that. We're we're six feet apart, man. Okay, just checking. I hope you don't have the Rona. Barrett. Ooh. Rona Barrett. Oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Chris. I didn't have you. Mom, <laughs> Mom had, did. <laughs> had you, man. All right. Uh, now, now I have to drive Raj home. Do yes, you have you. Uber? You. Uber. <laughs> you <laughs> got Uber, man. Hubert Humphrey. Thank you. Very- <laughs> Is that like Hubert Humphrey? Humphrey. He's very smooth. <laughs> no, Hubert Humphrey, no charge. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, okay, well, anybody that has the uh, audacity to come over here this time of night and do a podcast, I yeah. just have to let you in. Oh, yeah, it's real late. By the way, I'm sorry I lost the first 10 minutes of this. I'll try to cobble it together. Oh, that's quite all right, Chris. Oh, my God. Uh, that's good. Just, oh, by the way, did I tell you I'm sick of music? Oh, great. It's like I'm bored with it. You are? Yeah. I'm not. I love it. I'm bored with the way things sound. I'm bored. I mean, I, I can almost, an- I anticipate what's coming next usually. That's no good. So I need to I need to shake things up a bit. Yes. Maybe it's not the music's fault. No, maybe you should just learn to play the guitar. Maybe I should try to not play the guitar and just mess around with other things if i'm mm. trying to write i want to try to get into a writing mode yeah me too let's do that like a song a week i'm like, not gonna exchange. do a song a week Ex- <laughs> exchange how about exchange ver- verses and choruses and see how we are yeah good idea man okay i'm not gonna lock into a song a week what am i jonathan no, colton ridiculous. back in the no, day we, oh yes no okay thing a day thing a week he used to this guy used to do thing a week no you remember that no back in the early days of podcasting no oh stuff like that you did a week well, there's also like the dog days of podcasting. Where no, goes. I'm talking about music right now, man. Oh, <laughs> In the, he did what? What's it called? Thing a week? What? Yeah, thing a week. What's Jonathan it? Colton, C O U L T O N. He, he put a, produced a song every week, man. Okay, well, let's link to him. Uh, uh <laughs> okay. All right, brother. Thank you for the Mountain Dew diet, Mountain Dew. Awesome. Hey, okay. Now you can buy the next case of Mountain Dew. Okay. I don't believe you. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. We're the Yale Brothers, and we will uh, come back at you pretty soon. Yes. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye.